Abraham Lincoln. America's 16th president was born on February 12, 1809, in a log cabin near Hodgenville, Kentucky. His parents were poor settlers on the early frontier of our country. As a young child, he sometimes played in the woods and creeks when he wasn't helping his father feed the family. The Lincolns were farmers, and like most Americans of that time, lived off what they could grow and shoot. Abe and his older sister, Sarah, attended school in a one-room, windowless schoolhouse a few miles from their home. Here, Abe learned the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic, skills his parents had never learned. When he was only seven, his father decided to move to Indiana, which had just joined the Union as our 19th state. Here, they built a new log cabin and started another farm. Two years later, Abe's mother died, and after that time, his 11-year-old sister took her mother's place, cooking, cleaning, and spinning wool. His father remarried a young widow, and the Lincoln family grew to eight members. They all lived together in the one-room house. By now, Abe was growing tall, and he helped his father with farming and splitting wooden fence rails. As a teenager, a lot of work was required of Abe. And in addition, he had to educate himself. He loved to read and spent his evenings with the few books he could get his hands on. By the time he was 18, Abe got a job bringing a boat full of cargo down the Mississippi River to New Orleans, a journey of well over 1,000 miles. Although he had undoubtedly seen slaves before, it was in New Orleans that he first became aware of the huge business of buying and selling black human beings. A few more years passed by, and his family moved again, this time to the prairies of Illinois. By now, Abe was old enough to strike out on his own. He settled in the small woodland community of New Salem, Illinois. This thriving little town had a blacksmith shop, a cooperage where buckets and barrels were made, a tavern, and a few stores. At first, Abe got a job working in one of these stores, he joined the New Salem Debating Society and spent a lot of time studying in order to polish up his country ways. By the time he was 23, Abe decided to run for election to the state government. He lost the election but got a big majority of votes in his own area of the state. Not succeeding in politics, young Lincoln decided to go into business. He and a partner opened a general store which sold all sorts of things the frontier settlers might need. But it seemed that Abe just wasn't cut out to be a businessman because the store kept losing money even after they moved across the street to a bigger building with more merchandise. By the time the store closed down for good, Lincoln was $1,100 in debt, a sum so large it took 15 years to repay. By the time he was 25, Abe ran for the state legislature and this time he was elected. While serving as a legislator here at the state capitol, Lincoln began his study of law. Three years later found him not only serving a second term as legislator, but also working as a partner in a lawyer's office located across the street from the capitol. Lincoln's political successes continued to soar as a leader of the Illinois Whig Party and with re-elections to third and then fourth terms in the legislature. In November of 1842, Abraham Lincoln wed Mary Todd, the daughter of a wealthy Kentucky banker. Because of his prosperous law practice, the Lincolns were able to purchase this fine new house in Springfield. And here, on this street, they raised their four boys, Robert, Eddie, Willie, and Tad. Over the next 17 years, this house served as their home. Lincoln's political ambitions continued to rise, and in 1846, he was elected to his first national office, serving in the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. Here, he debated the critical issues of slavery and war with Mexico. As a congressman in Washington, Lincoln could look out the windows of the Capitol building and see pens where black people were kept chained before being sold in the South. At that time, most of the states north of the capital did not allow slavery, while all of the southern states did allow it. 
The slaves were used on the big southern farms, which grew cotton and tobacco. They were treated as the property of the men who owned the farms and had absolutely no rights or freedom. As a congressman, Lincoln wanted to see slavery done away with, and he felt that if Congress could keep slavery from spreading, it would probably just fade away. The issue of slavery was a source of great trouble between the northern and southern states. Northerners regarded slavery as a moral evil, and the white southerners saw slavery as necessary to support their agricultural way of life. Lincoln considered his two-year term in Congress a disappointment because he was not very successful in accomplishing what he wanted, ending slavery and ending the war with Mexico. He returned to Springfield and to being a lawyer. In 1850, his son Eddie died at the age of three. Abe became very gloomy and tried to forget his sadness by working extra long hours. His wife didn't leave her room for weeks. Lincoln ran as a Whig for the U.S. Senate in 1855 and lost. He ran again as a Republican in the 1858 election, and during the political race, he carried on debates with the other candidate, Stephen Douglas. Many people attended these debates. Douglas was for slavery, and Lincoln was against it. As Lincoln said, There is no reason in the world why the Negro is not entitled to all the natural rights enumerated in the Declaration of Independence. The rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I hold that he is as much entitled to these as a white man. Although Lincoln again lost the race for the Senate, his debates with Douglas caused him to become a well-known national political figure. And two years later, Abraham Lincoln was elected the 16th president of the United States. In 1860, the country had become bitterly divided between North and South. Seven Southern states had left the Union four months after Lincoln's election, and more were expected to follow. Within the month following his inauguration, war had broken out between the states starting when an army fort at Charleston, South Carolina, was bombarded by rebel forces. Loyal troops were rushed to Washington, D.C. to protect the capital, which was just across the Potomac River from the rebel town of Alexandria, Virginia, and little more than 100 miles from the Confederate capital of Richmond. The North had a population of 22 million and contained most of the country's factories, whereas the South was basically agricultural and had a population of nine million people, of which nearly four million were slaves. It might seem that the odds against the South were impossible, and yet Southerners were great fighters led by brilliant generals, such as Robert E. Lee. And during the first year of the Civil War, the Union troops were rarely successful in beating the rebel armies. Meanwhile, President and Mrs. Lincoln lost a second son, Willie, to a bad fever. After his death, Mrs. Lincoln never fully recovered, and her husband was also overwhelmed with grief. Now they had only two of their four children left alive. Little Tad, who lived with his parents at the White House, and his older brother Robert, who was away at college. By the summer after Willie's death, President Lincoln had decided that freeing the slaves was a military necessity, absolutely essential to the preservation of the Union. And on New Year's Day, 1863, Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the Southern slaves and which allowed them to join the Union Army. By the end of the war, more than 180,000 blacks, mostly emancipated slaves, had served in the Union Army. The Civil War ground on with tremendous loss of life. On July 1st, 1863, the worst battle of the war began outside a little Pennsylvania town called Gettysburg. 170,000 troops engaged in battle, and in the end, the rebel forces were defeated, but the total number of dead was over 43,000. On November 19th, President Lincoln made a short but famous speech at the battlefield where he was dedicating a cemetery to those who died at the Battle of Gettysburg. In this speech, known as the Gettysburg Address, 
Lincoln said that the men who died in this battle had done so to preserve our American democracy. To make certain that those dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. After the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863, the South was soon overrun by Union troops who destroyed most of what was in their path. By April of 1865, the Confederate capital of Richmond had been captured and laid to ruin. And by the 9th of that month, the Union general, Ulysses S. Grant, accepted the surrender of the Confederate general, Robert E. Lee, at Appomattox, Virginia. Six months earlier, Abraham Lincoln had been re-elected to a second term as president. And on January 31, 1865, the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which made slavery illegal, was proposed to Congress. It finally began to seem to President Lincoln that he could start to take life a bit easier. On Good Friday, April 14th, five days after the rebel surrender, Lincoln said to his wife, I never felt so happy in my life. That evening after dinner, he and Mary went with two friends to a play at Ford's Theater near the White House. As the president sat enjoying the performance, an actor named John Wilkes Booth slipped into his viewing box and shot him in the head. The mortally wounded president was taken across the street to a boarding house and put into a bed. He died here at 7.22 in the morning at the age of 56. And America had lost one of its greatest men. John Wilkes Booth and his conspirators were hunted down and caught. A funeral was held for the president in the East Room of the White House. And the next day, his body was carried to the Capitol Dome where thousands of people, both black and white, filed by the open coffin. On April 21st, a funeral train draped in black carried the president's body back to his hometown of Springfield, Illinois, where it rests today. And although he has been gone for well over a century, Abraham Lincoln remains in the memory of all Americans as the man who freed the slaves and preserved the Union of the United States.